Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Wan Yong Sun Min. So this is uh, basically part two of my uh, talk on Pure Land Buddhism from uh, last month. And so tonight I'm particularly focusing on the recitation of Amitabha's name, which has become the uh, central practice of folks who most closely identify with uh, Pure Land Buddhism. And just for starters, this is not the same as as uh, um, chanting a, a mantra normally. And so it is a, a bit of a different uh, practice. And this practice really comes out of a, or is part of a broader practice of um, recollecting, <clears throat> um, the recollection of Buddhas, uh, which is an old pre-Pure Land practice. Um, and uh, one big part of this was um, the uh, visualization of a Buddha or a Buddha's pure land. So not necessarily Amitabha's uh, pure land of Sukhavati, could be a uh, great many of them. Um, also the recitation of any Buddha's name, which, you know, a few sutras and teachers say, you know, if you recite the name of one, you recite them all. If you, through visualization of one, come to see a Buddha, you come to see uh, all of them. And over time, the recitation of, uh, as opposed to visualization, recitation became a central practice, the dominant practice, and in particular, the recitation of Amitabha Buddha's name became uh, um, became uh, dominant for, you know, what became called uh, Pure Land. Um, although, in Korea, it seems um, um, uh, Guanyin is, you know, just as uh, just as important as Avaloki, uh, as uh, sorry, Amitabha uh, Buddha. Um, more people probably chant her name than, <clears throat> uh, than but, well, I don't know, <laughs> may chant her name more than Amitabha's name. I've never done a, never seen a survey. Um, uh, but for some folks who identify with Pure Land Buddhism more particularly, the, uh, the recitation of Amitabha's name has, in fact, supplanted uh, any other practices. Um, even for some folks, even uh, supplanting things like um, um, uh, prostrations, right? Um, and then, but, you know, the majority of uh, Pure Land teachers and uh, Pure Land schools, of course, there's no separation, no clear separation between Pure Land Buddhism and Zen or Hua Yen or, or anything else. And so multiple practices are still uh, still quite common. Um, so as, for example, with me. Uh, okay, so on to actually the recitation of Amitabha's name. Um, and so um, one, uh, or perhaps even the principal practice is the constant recitation of Amitabha's name, um, whether uh, silently or aloud, probably for most of the day, uh, silently, you know, constantly run through one's head. Um, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, or uh, nam, Namo uh, Amitabha in Korean or whatever language you happen to be doing it in. Um, and of course, uh, people doing it uh, formally, um, you know, perhaps using the, um, using one's mala. Um, and so, you know, sitting in the morning and the evening, uh, reciting it, um, you know, some teachers recommending, you know, having a set number of rounds on your mala uh, every day, just as one might say, okay, a teacher might say, okay, you know, sit for a specific amount of time uh, meditating every morning. Um, and so, um, so what's the, the point of this? So the most uh, literal, literal um, uh, purpose of this practice is the idea that one, as one um, recites this as, or at least as according to the Pure Land Sutras, or the so-called Pure Land Sutras. There's tons of Pure Land Sutras. There's three they could call the Pure Land Sutras, but you know one can readily read the Lotus Sutra and the Avatamsaka Sutra as uh, Pure Land Sutras because there's a everything takes place in Pure Lands. Um, uh, but according to the um, Amitabha uh, Sutras, one recites or recollects the Buddha in some way, visualization, recitation. But if one would manage to recite Amitabha's name in just one pure recitation, uh, that would do it in your lifetime. But a special emphasis on, particularly as one is dying, um, 
uh, re reciting Amitabha's name, and then uh, upon death, Amitabha comes to you, uh, embraces you, and takes you to Sukhavati, the land of bliss, where you can, without hindrance, and for as much with as much time as you need, uh, practice until uh, you awaken, and where everybody there is guaranteed uh, to attain uh, Nutara, Samyak Sambodhi, and then can go on to help all other beings. But there are multiple approaches to Pure Land Buddhism, and um, and so the uh, mind-only school of Pure Land approaches this uh, quite differently. And um, you know, so folks like uh, Wanyo or uh, Chinul, you know, talking about you know the Pure Land or impure lands are right here and right now. It's a matter of um, per, uh, perception, you know, perhaps a very Yogacara uh, sort of way of, of looking at things. And so in each moment, we have the opportunity to awaken in Sukhavati um, so that we can awaken and, and help all um, help all beings. So regardless of one's orientation with this, when reciting Amitabha's name, the crucial thing is to hear the sound, like really listening to the sound. And different teachers talk about this in, in different ways. So in one way, if one understands Amitabha Buddha as the, as the Dharmakaya, the, the Dharma body, basically, as the cosmos, all things in it, all time and sp and space, then the sound is non-different from Amitabha. To hear Namo Amitabha Buddha is to hear Ami uh, Amitabha Buddha, is to uh, hear the Dharmakaya, um, is to hear it. Um, it's the same as Amitabha. And so you are hearing Amitabha itself whenever you hear that sound. And of course, that goes for everything then. Hearing my voice right now is hearing Amitabha Buddha. Um, feeling the, the chair or the cushion under your butt, that sensation is Amitabha Buddha, uh, of course. Um, another way of hearing the sounds, teachers talk about it as um, your um, as sort of a, a reversal in uh, hearing Amitabha's name. In fact, even though one is reciting it, it is Amitabha Buddha calling to you. Um, and again, if they're the sound and Amitabha are non-different, then um, of course that's happening. Other folks uh, talk about it as when calling out Amitabha's name, reciting it as uh, the child crying for its parent. You know, babies, little kids cry to to get that uh, to get the attention. You know, you need help. You still don't know much about how to express oneself and crying brings uh, brings the mother. Um, crying out Amitabha's name um, brings to you the all encompass the uh, Amitabha Buddha with its all encompassing compassion. All right, so different ways here of, of, uh, of engaging with the sound. Um, but there's also, um, you know, teachers talking about, and so um, in particular, thinking like uh, Shinran from Japan, where, you know, many, some ways takes, you know, some influences from, uh, from Wanyo in, uh, in Japan on this, just like, you know, Wanyo was you know, really influential in China, of course, uh, but also to a lesser extent in Japan. Uh, but Pure Land, who's you know, developed with Shinran, I mean, is just, you know, really brilliant, or Renyo, who followed after him uh, later, like these really brilliant practitioners and and um, and uh, philosophers. And um, Shinran, I think, had some really useful things for how to think about uh, reciting this. And he said, you know, while you're reciting this, you also got to be thinking about what it is that, reflecting on what it is that you're reciting here. And he talked about a few different ways. And one that I really, really appreciate and have found incredibly valuable and effective is as you're reciting this, the attitude that you take in reciting Namo Amitabha Buddha is just one of total gratitude. Amitabha, the, the Dharmakaya, the nature of the cosmos is um, everything interdependent and uh, empty and um, mutually dependent. Uh, it, it makes possible um, well, of suffering and the end of suffering makes possible awakening. And so reciting the name with a gratitude uh, for that, and not even for the potential of one's own awakening, but even other people's, making possible other people's awakening. Because of course, if everybody else wakes up, like you, who cares about your own? You know, your own awakening just simply becomes unnecessary if everybody else um, uh, manages to, 
uh, to wake up your own just doesn't matter anymore. And so it was gratitude for the all-encompassing compassion of Amitabha Buddha. Um, one can also reflect, you know, quite directly on, uh, you know, what is Amitabha Buddha, reflecting on it as the, the Dharmakaya uh, in its emptiness and in its uh, interdependence. And so imagine just, you know, constantly reciting in one's head as one goes about one's business, Namo Amitabha Buddha, and constantly reflecting upon that. I'm sure you can see the usefulness of that. Um, a third way, another thing I've found useful, I'm not sure I've seen anybody else talk about doing this, but um, I found very useful. And these, I found all three, four, five, however you want to categorize everything I've talked about, uh, they um, interlace with one another. They they end up being layers upon one another, not necessarily something you do one at a time. I, I probably did layer it first, starting off with the gratitude and then other layers sort of come into it and they build on one another and reinforce one another. Um, but anyway, another one is the you know self power versus other power. So I talked about that last time, and you get someone like you know Chinul talking about pure land practice. Um, when he talks about reciting Amitabha's name or doing the visualizations, I mean, it really does strike me as just simply meditation and you know, not you know actually particularly pure land, um, uh, and you know uh, specifically. Um, and so it might very much be in sort of the realm of, of self-power, you know, what one's own efforts are taking you uh, wherever, you know, but then if you're chanting it for Amitabha to come and take you to death, you know, sort of the attitude of it is very much a sort of other power thing. You know, one is totally inadequate on one's own and relying entirely upon Amitabha Buddha uh, for one's uh, awakening. Um, but I mean, probably, you know, any of us here, are probably thinking, well, you know, self-power versus other power. Who is this self to have any power? Who is this other to have any power? And of course, the um, difference between the two collapses. And so as one is reciting this in the context of thinking about this uh, um, seeming conflict between self-power and other power, how this, and um, reciting Amitabha's name with reflection upon it as the, the Dharmakaya, reflecting on it with this sense of gratitude, that boundary between you know self and other can and self power and other power um, can can collapse. It becomes just one other layer in there. You know, thinking about what it is that one is one is doing, and of course, who is there to be doing any of this falls apart. Um, and so, ultimately, I and mean, one of the things to do with this is, um, in the end, giving up all purpose. Uh, is especially is why I think the emphasis on uh, reciting with total gratitude is so powerful. It gives up, uh, gives up purpose. Um, it's just uh, total openness, uh, surrender. And so I think you know, surrendering with total gratitude, I think, is probably the most important instruction that, from my experience of this, that has um, that I can offer. So Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha.